Hello and welcome to Drishti IS. I am Pooja Devedi and we are beginning with our new initiative, the In News series. In this segment, we are going to discuss the topics of current significance which are important from the perspective of civil services examination. So let's begin. And today we are going to discuss the Hyperloop project which is important from the perspective of prelims as well as GS mains papers. So first of all, let's have a look on the topics that we are going to touch step by step. The first and foremost, why in news? We will talk about the Virgin Hyperloop and other similar initiatives taken by the Government of India. We will talk about the background and precisely what is Hyperloop technology. We will talk about Hyperloop One Global Challenge as well as advantages and the challenges posed by Hyperloop. And in the midst of the entire segment, I'm going to tell you a prelim space question for which if you know the answer, you can comment in the comment box. So why in news? Because Richard Branson's Virgin Hyperloop has completed its first, its world first passenger ride on super high speed levitating pod system. Levitating means to hover or float in the air. And it has been a key safety test for the wider usage and commercialization of this entire technology. Virgin Hyperloop reached the speed of 172 kilometers per hour at Las Vegas, the company said. The company had previously run over 400 tests, but it was passenger free. This test has been with passengers. The company is working towards safety certification by the year 2025 and its wider commercial application by the year 2030. Now we will discuss what is Virgin Hyperloop and what is its applications in the field of Hyperloop technology. Virgin Hyperloop is an American transport technology company and it is working to commercialize the high-speed transportation technology concept by the name of Hyperloop. It is a transportation system where a pod-like or a capsule-like vehicle runs through a near vacuum tube. Now, it will connect speeds. It will connect cities with speeds matching that of an aircraft. And the Hyperloop concept is the brainchild of Tesla CEO Elon Musk. In the year 1910, the American rocket pioneer Robert Goddard said that he would make fruition of a technology in which a train will travel from Boston to New York in the time span of 12 minutes. And he proposed this train to float over the magnet. That means it's a maglev. He proposed a maglev technology and it did not come into being, but it did sow seeds for this Hyperloop project now. So maglev technology or maglev as we know it, maglev. It's made of two words, magnetic and levitation. So the pod will float over a tube by the help of a super magnet and the Shanghai maglev works in, on the same principle, maglev technology. It's the highest super fast train, the worldwide super fast train by the name of Shanghai Maglev works on the same concept. So this Hyperloop concept will transport not only passengers, but also freight in a very short span of time. Moving forward, the USA based Hyperloop transport technology has claimed in order to build a Hyperloop system for one kilometer, it will cost only and only USD $40 million. And this, if a train would be, if a super speed train would have been constructed, a route would have been constructed for that, it would have cost twice. The Maharashtra government has signed an agreement with Virgin Group to build a Hyperloop trans transit system in the year 2018. We will look at the route. It will go from Pune to Mumbai, covering 168 kilometers in just a time span of 25 minutes. If you would have taken 
the route with the help of a train it would have cost you 2 hours and 43 minutes it is being this project is being administered by pune metropolitan regional development authority now in the comment section you have to tell me which is the second state after maharashtra to get the hyperloop project now moving forward we will look at the hyperloop technology what is it basically now this is the entire structure of the hyperloop pod as well as the transit tube this is the tube or the pod passengers have been seated in it it doesn't carry a lot of passengers now how does it move first of all as we discussed earlier it works on the maglev technology that means it has to hover so hovering will be there with the help of super high powered electromagnets on the side of the tube it will lift the pod up and the tube uh, the pod will be propelled with the help of the same magnet same intensity of magnet on the central line it will be propelling or moving forward now in order to avoid any sort of mishappenings with the wildlife this will be built above the ground hyperloop tube will be supported above the ground in columns that means it's environment friendly as well and comparing its speed hyperloop 1 will work at 670 miles per hour so these are the basic concept of the hyperloop technology the other similar initiatives which were taken by niti aayog in the year 2017 consisted not only hyperloop but also metrino pod taxis for which a committee was formed it was chaired by the top official of railways its aim was to study safety parameters as this technology is at a very initial stage in order to look for the safety of the passengers and accountability issues a committee was formed and the technologies are being explored in order to elevate the traffic woes the traffic crisis in the country and there are certain initiatives which include in metrinos as we talked earlier metrinos are automated and driverless pods which are suspended above the ground with the help of an overhead network it will also consist of stadler buses these are new generation of buses with better capacity holding hybrid buses which are environment friendly buses it will not have only one fuel option but multiple other fuel options pod taxis which are small automated taxi like vehicles it is driverless and then you have freight rail roads so these are the initiatives to take care of the traffic crisis in the country and also to move forward with the world talking about background whenever any technology which proves uh, which is going to enhance high speed technology high speed transit technology it has to walk through two obstacles the first is friction and the second is air resistance or drag that means drag is the pressure created by air or an on any for moving forward object so it has to use a lot of energy in order to overcome the air resistance or the drag so the vacuum concept the vacuum train concept basically eliminates these obstacles how by employing magnetically levitating trains magnetically hovering trains or propelled trains or partly evacuated tube near vacuum tubes so you have to keep these two in mind these should be maglev with near vacuum tubes all right these two are the main requisites of a vacuum concept the hyperloop resembles the vacuum system and it uh, uh, works approximately at 1 millibar of pressure the system is proposed to be entirely autonomous that means without any sort of driver it should be quiet because it will overcome any sort of resistance or friction it will be direct to destination as well as on demand and we have discussed earlier that it will take care of the wildlife as well see how does the hyperloop technology work 
in Virgin Hyperloop in Elon Musk's concept. So the tunnels through which this pod will operate will have most of their air removed. They are not completely vacuums, but it will have much less air. And according to Musk's concept, this pod, this pod will be hovering over air itself because air will help it to hover. That is why it is not totally free of air. Musk suggested that the power required to remove the air from the tubes will be taken care by the solar power panels which is fitted on the roof of the tunnel itself. It's energy efficient as well. Hyperloop, one global challenge which kicked off in the year 2016, it invited individuals, governments, academicians to propose to give a proposal in order to develop Hyperloop transit system in their region. So there were five winners which were selected. Canada, India, USA, UK and Mexico. Now the Hyperloop 1, Hyperloop 1 did not only select the champions, but it will also work close in alliance with these different countries in order to analyze the entire fieldwork and the needs of their regions. All right, so these are the five champions as we all discussed above. Okay, and moving forward, the advantages. What are going to be the advantages of Hyperloop? So it will be energy efficient as it will overcome drag or the air resistance and also the friction. It will use much less energy than any other sort of technology. The Hyperloop could use up to six times less energy on short routes on the same routes in which an aircraft is flying through. The Hyperloop would also help in infrastructural integration by exploiting its high speed technological concept two transport hubs could be integrated and the hyperloop could also create short city to city connections allowing very less infrastructure investment so virtually it will integrate two transport hubs and which will not lead a lot of investment when it comes to infrastructure expansion. Other important advantages, job creation and enhancement or giving boost to the Make in India project of India because it will create a lot of skill as well as unskilled jobs and it will also create manufacturing hubs in India which will give boost to the Make in India initiative of the government. It will, of course, take care of the congestion problem in huge urban areas such as Pune and Mumbai. And it will take care of the traffic crisis of this entire country. As we know, our population and population density. What are the challenges, basically? Challenges are many. First is safety concerns. Because we don't know the suitability of the age group, which age group of people could comfortably could safely travel in such pods, emergency exit, what are going to be the provisions when it comes to emergency in, ca in case of any unfortunate incident happening in the entire transit and also accountability issues are there. As this technology is autonomous, this will be driverless. So who will be accountable in case of any misfortunate accidents happen? It will be initially unprofitable. Why? Because investments are huge in billions of dollars, the ticket fares or the price per head will be proportionate and that is why it will cater to only the elites and not to the masses. Right now it wouldn't, in near future it may, but right now it will only cater to the needs of the very rich or the elites. Technical constraints, as we have already understood that this technology is very new in case of application. Theoretically, it's pretty old, but in case of practicality, it's new. So because it has a lot of technological know-how constraints in India, so it will lead to certain delays as well. Land acquisition, because per capita density in India with respect to other countries, it is a lot. 
so acquiring land from them then rehabilitating the displaced populace it is also going to be a really really arduous task so we have i think we have engulfed every other dimension which is related to this topic so i f i hope that you found this entire segment informative tomorrow we will turn up with a similar segment thank you so much for watching and stay updated